Welcome to the Selling Infrastructure as Code to Your Boss presentation. I am your host, Rob Hirschfeld, CEO and co-founder of RackN, and Infrastructure as Code is core to what we do. So I want to share not just what it is, but more importantly, how to sell it inside your organization, because we actually find that is the bigger challenge for most of our customers and prospects. And we have spent a fair bit of time talking about what Infrastructure as Code is uh, at Cloud Austin. And please go back and check out that presentation where I break down the technology and how it fits together. It's glorious. But I want to go through it in a little bit more detail because free tools are not Infrastructure as Code. And I know that because Ansible is not Ansible Tower. Uh, Terraform is not Terraform Enterprise. These are things that you pay for to get the management levels. And that's, a, that's an important thing. So when you think about infrastructure as code, you will need to get budget to make that happen. And if it's not just buying the tools, it's also how do you get the time? How do you get the political capital? How do you pay down the technical debt that you're going to have to pay down to do infrastructure as code? Before I get into that, what is infrastructure as code? <laughs> Only have five minutes. So first, it has to be collaborative, must be portable. Uh, separation of concerns and API driven, repeatable, super important, uh, CICD is critical here, and autonomic with self-reconciling and healing and automatic, automated uh, capabilities, all critically important uh, to make infrastructure as code work. And this is something we're actively discussing at the 2030.cloud during DevOps Lunch and Learns every week, Tuesdays at 1 p.m. Central. Please join us there. Uh, great discussions. We go into those four <laughs> items a lot more and talk about other things too. But we're talking about CIOs and the TLDR for a CIO is that they want their ops to be more dev. They, they really like how developers have platforms and tools and CI pipelines and code control and repeatable, predictable process. And that is what they want to see out of infrastructure as code, actually out of their ops teams. And infrastructure as code is the way we're going to deliver it. But to sell them, you can't just say infrastructure as code. You read about it on your last flight. They're not taking flights anymore, so I don't know where they're getting information. And you're not going to be able to come in and say the ROI for this is cool tech. That doesn't work. Uh, in some ways, that's an anti-pattern. CIOs want predictable results. Bringing in new technology can cause disruptions, right? We're not talking about K9S or K10S or K20S. No, we're talking about something that has to deliver other work, other value. So savings, right? Coming in with big savings for infrastructure as code is hard because you're not going to necessarily get less time. Automating things is faster, but it takes time to do that and maintain it. So that's not the, the big win for this. And fewer people. Uh, you're going to need expensive hard, you know, automation engineers and, and real engineering, you know, taking people, taking the key keyboards away from people doesn't mean that there's just fewer people doing the work. You still have to do all this automation. So that isn't going to give it to you. And besides, we all know you can't save your way to, to big profits. You have to do something else. But CIOs are very motivated by risk and things that could break, things that are going to impede business goals and processes. And a lot of times operations are are framed in risk. And so de-risking operations is a, actually a very valuable way to, to sell infrastructure as code to a, an executive. First way to do that is to talk about being transparent and audible so that you, as you go through your processes, you know what's going on, you know who made changes, what was changed, what's deployed, right? Nothing mysterious going on in your environment. And you can track what it was. Critically important stuff. And it needs to be more repeatable. So when you go through a process, you know that it's going to work end to end. You've practiced it. You've rehearsed it. You do it over and over again. That means that as you go and build your business, you're confident that when you start something, it finishes. When you change something, it's changed. Very valuable from an executive's perspective. And most critically, it's more collaborative. This is, comes back as bus factors. It comes back for being able to reuse the code, bring in pieces, have your expertise more distributed. In a lot of cases, these infrastructure as code platforms, if they're done well, have standard libraries and best practices and things like that. All that's collaboration. It's making your teams smarter and focused more on the business needs that you have. And when you focus on the business needs, working across silos in your organization, those are key values for your 
executives to understand. And then they're going to have to apply resources, uh, time, money, prioritization. Prioritization means dealing with politics to make all this stuff work. Uh, and they're going to have to come in and make that go because infrastructure as code is going to require doing the collaboration work, paying down the technical debt, and making everything sort of come together as an organization. And frankly, that's the benefit. That's what we want out of infrastructure as code, not just fancy spinning lights and code. It really comes back to seeing your whole IT tool chain as shared responsibility, shared work. Um, and that's what infrastructure as code can become in your organization and why it's so important for you to be able to advocate for it effectively. Uh, we do this all the time at RackN. This is what we bring into customer environments because we take a systems approach and try and break down silos. Uh, we'd love to have you look at the product, of course, but don't, you know, we want you to be a customer, but that's not the point here. Uh, what we've done with Digital Rebar, we believe, is the best practice approach to infrastructure as code, systems thinking, infrastructure automation, and just looking at what we've done with it can give you ideas on how to improve your own infrastructure and how you want to make things work. I hope this has been helpful. This is Rob Hirschfeld, signing out.